Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am joined today by Brianna of Brianna's Business Boutique, and we are talking about an often overlooked part of the business experience, which is enhancing our client experience. But before we dive into the topic, I would like to introduce Brianna to our listeners today. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to connect with our listeners. So before we dive in, can you tell us more about yourself and what you do? Yes. Well, uh, me in a nutshell, uh, Brianna, live in the Midwest. I'm a dog mom. I'm I'm an entrepreneur and I love supporting female entrepreneurs. That is uh, my passion. And I started my business a few years ago um, with the sole intent of helping women um, create better balance in their business um, and helping those those women who are striving to grow their business and scale their business, helping them put all of those systems in place. So I help them with implementing sustainability um, and systems so that they can scale and kind of live out their passions, um, whether that be running their business full time or going on vacation or um, you know doing something else locally in their community. That's incredible. So how did your business journey begin? Did you set out from day one to start and run your own business or how did, how did that come about? Yeah, it actually came from a dark place actually in my life where I was just no longer being fulfilled. Um, I knew I hadn't been fulfilled for a while with a corporate career And um, after five years of kind of just battling societal expectations and norms of like, you went to college, you should get a job, you should be, you know, working in um, the industry that your major was in, all of those sort of things, um, kind of got to the bottom of my barrel of (laughs) my emotional capacity and physical capacity to do that. And so I kind of set out looking for a job where I could use the skills that I have Um, but also serve a community that I was really passionate about. And what I landed on was obviously the female entrepreneur community. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. I really appreciate that you shared that. And I can totally relate to it because I came, my original career was in healthcare. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a degree in a completely unrelated field. You can start fresh. You can learn literally anything online. And that is the beauty of the world we're living in, that you literally have the power to change the narrative, change the trajectory of your life. So, Brianna, thank you so much for sharing that because a lot of us can relate. We feel stuck. So thank you. I yeah. And you. who wants to be stuck in right. a career or, um, you know, an industry that they chose when, I mean, I chose this when I was 18. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, once you hit like in these different milestones of your life, you're like, wow, I've really evolved. That's not something I'm interested in anymore. So right, right. I love that, you know, we have the freedom and ability to do things and, you know, will our passions shift again? Probably. And that's the beauty of this like online entrepreneur space. Yes, it, it really truly is the beauty. So let's dive into client experience. So in a broad sense, what is client experience and why does it matter? Yeah. Great question. Um, It's not something that's maybe thought a lot about. Um, A lot of people, you know, on the business owner perspective, they're just so worried about, you know, um, filling up spots, selling services, you know, raising their revenue, um, growing their business, growing their team. Um, Yet in the midst of all of that growth, um, they forget to think about how it's impacting their clients and um, how the different systems that they use or the different ways that they communicate with their system um, with their clients actually impact them. And so um, in, in a broad perspective, the client experience is a way to think about the user's perspective and um, how they interact with your company and your brand. And so it's kind of one of those, you know, 
the first impressions matter or the, you know, the, you know, something like that. And that's what I really think about when I think about the client experience is that first impression. Um, you know, you're selling this high ticket price. Uh, this high ticket offer and um, what, what's that like elite experience that you're giving somebody, even if they're just sitting at their computer. So that's everything that goes into the client experience has to do with that. Oh, I love that. So can you give us some easy ways we can enhance our current client experiences? Yes. Well, the first and I think the easiest one is obviously the channels of communication. It's uh, staying in touch with that person who's either purchased any product from you or who is going to be part of a intensive group program. Um, it's a way to communicate with them, um, give them reminders, but also stay very on brand. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for you to kind of sprinkle in some of your personality and the way that you communicate with your clients. Um, so whether you're going to be giving them some text message reminders or you're going to give it, be giving them some helpful tips in their emails, um, keeping them in the loop once they've purchased something from you um, so they feel like they are part of your circle and they're part of a bigger community. Oh my gosh, that's a great tip. Love yeah, that. so that is one of the first things that I focus on, obviously, is the communication piece. Um, and then, you know, as you um, welcome somebody into your community, I think one of my favorite things to do is give them some sort of like welcoming gift, whether that be um, something that you physically send in the mail, um, or it could be just like a fun PDF, kind of explaining the journey some sort of surprise that they get that they maybe weren't expecting. Um, and that can really help, you know, kind of solidify someone's, um, you know, decision to work with you or to invest in you if, if you're a coach or a service provider. So I love to provide um, a welcome packet. Um, I love to provide, you know, like a, a gift card for coffee, something like that, that will make someone um, really excited um, to start working with you. Maybe if they're just in that beginning phase, kind of waiting to get started. Yeah. And I love how you say too, it doesn't have to be anything that's crazy expensive or extravagant. You don't have to send them a $200 gift box, but you know, who doesn't love getting just a little coffee certificate or, Hey, coffee's on me today, or you know, just some sort of little freebie. It can really make someone say just those little tokens of appreciation. Can that work with our current clients as well? Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, one thing that I do with clients from time to time is that uh, we sit down for VIP sessions where they have like a four hour dedicated block of time with me to really work on a big project, something that they want to um, break down together and create a timeline for and get into their project management system and get really excited about. Um, but those four hour sessions can also be really draining, obviously. Um, so one thing that I like to do before my VIP sessions with a new or a current client is I like to send them a little treat. So either I send them some money to get coffee or a snack. Um, sometimes I'll send like snack boxes because um, it's a way to just like, hey, let's dive in. This is a fun um, this is a fun experience that you're going through with a friend and um, let's be comfortable. We don't have to be, <laughs> you know, nervous about this situation. Um, let's get something going on in our day so that we can get excited about jumping into this session together. So I think that's definitely something that you can um, incorporate and, and make whatever you provide um, really on brand. As mentioned, it doesn't need to be expensive. It could be a fun sticker. Um, this candle right here, I actually got from a business coach that I've worked with. And it's kind of just like a remembrance of um, our connection together. So something that they can keep in their office, something that's fun. Maybe it's a live plant that can live on with them in their business, something like that. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. I love it. So for the business owner that's struggling to figure out, okay, I know I need to do this. I know I need to enhance this experience. How can you navigate finding opportunities? to really enhance that client experience. Yeah, and so that's um, that's where it comes to like really working with somebody, I feel like, and kind of breaking down um, step by step what you want your user or your client to experience. Um, so I, I think it kind of takes going back to the basics and um, stepping out, okay, what's the first thing? Okay, will they purchase this e-product? 
okay, and then next they're going to get a email, you know, delivering the product. And then next, you know, let's check in with them. Let's make sure that they don't have any questions. Let's send them that e-product again to make sure that it got delivered correctly. Um, you know, and maybe a few days later, let's, um, let's offer to jump on a call with them. You know, whatever that may be, um, you really need to break down step by step. And that's where I use kind of workflow process mapping um, in my business to help my clients. And um, I think that's a really helpful thing to do because sometimes when you're in it and you're a business owner, it's really hard to see the, the big picture or kind of the bird's eye view of everything. So kind of having an unbiased third party in that situation can help you be like, okay, well, what should come next? Um, how could we insert your brand? How can we show them more of your personality? Um, how do we make sure that they're feeling serviced and taken care of? And um, I think that's a great place to start. Oh, that's a gr fabulous place to start. And I love how you talked about, you know, having workflows. I think so many times as business owners, we forget to have those workflows into place. We know in our brains how it's supposed to go, but when you actually have it on paper, then you can really objectively look at it and be like, oh, okay, there's an opportunity here. All right, there's an opportunity there. And I think it's worth mentioning too that, you know, with the client experience, we shouldn't forget to enhance our current client's experience, not just with new clients that we're onboarding, but also our current clients. What are ways to nurture them? What are ways to improve the current clients that we're working with too, that experience? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, unfortunately, but also a great thing is that sometimes it takes that trial and error. It takes really living it and seeing like, what doesn't work or like this isn't feeling right this is feeling really disjointed right here to actually go back and um create that workflow and then you kind of have a basis to look at be like you're right there's such a big gap between when they sign their contract with me and when we actually start talking you know what can we do in between there so um when you are working with current clients kind of look for those pain points look for those areas where maybe clients are asking you lots of questions or they're feeling confused about what to do next. Um, and also ask for that feedback too. Um, clients um, will always willingly, you know, give you that feedback about like, what could have been better? Um, what would you have liked instead of this? And that can give you some further insight as to how to enhance that. And um, one thing that is definitely important to be said about enhancing your client experience is that it's never done you know that it, it's a process that is continually evolving it's a living and a breathing thing so never feel like you have to have it a hundred percent um making tweaks here and there um once you find those opportunities that's what the client experience optimization is all about oh so good and i love to how you know actively seeking that feedback i think that's something a lot of times we forget to do as business owners, because we get so wrapped up in the day to day that we forget to ask our clients, okay, how are you feeling? How is this going? Because that sh sheds light on those opportunities that we can improve. And mm -hmm. that right there, it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of effort, you know, just create a Google form that they can tell you or at the end of your call, just ask them for that feedback. And most people are very willing to give it to you. You just have to ask. Yes, people love to be part of the process. And so if you, you know, send a message to a few of your clients, be like, hey, I have this idea. Would you mind, you know, kind of going over it together? I, I was wondering if this would benefit you or benefit a future student of mine. Um, and people love to give that feedback. Um, the reason why I started implementing the, the coffee in my VIP sessions honestly, was client feedback. Um, one of my clients was like, you know what? It would have been amazing to have some coffee, you know, before I think I'm like, oh. Ding, 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 light bulb <laughs> moment. I'm going to start doing that. So, um, you know, shout out to all of the clients who feel like, that, you know, that level of comfortability, um, because it really does help the business owner and future clients at the end of the day. So it's a win-win situation when someone speaks up and kind of shares something that could have been improved. Yeah, definitely. And just, you know, remembering to be ob objective about it. Know that that is objective data. When you get that feedback, it's not a direct reflection of you. I think so many times it's easy to take it to heart, but no, seek it as an opportunity for growth. Reframe that that feedback. So if somebody's coming in with a, a negative experience, just know that that's okay. Learn from it. Now you can improve. This is an opportunity. 
yeah, we, de we definitely can improve our client experience if things don't go wrong or if things don't, you know, maybe fall through the fall through the gaps or things get lost or um, things get broken. That's kind of the part of making things better is that they kind of have to crumble first. So right. that's one thing I love is that um, nothing is ever broken um, in the client experience. Like things can always be fixed and they can always be used to make it better. So um, every everything you tweak and everything you fix is just, um, you know, bet bettering your client experience. Exactly. I mean, you even look at these massive companies like Amazon. When Amazon first started out, they did not have Prime. You know, you weren't getting things within two days, but they saw these opportunities and they they jumped and they they took advantage and messy action and and did it and now it's this streamlined machine it's kind of crazy how you know you can place an order and something's literally at your house like boom right then insane yeah and think of how many calls you're on that says would you like to stay in the line to take a survey right that's exactly what that's exactly what um is happening there is like they're finding out ways that they could have um, better the client experience for you. And so by you taking the time and giving your feedback, you know, they're like, we'll put you in a raffle to win a gift card, right. whatever it may be. The same thing happens in our own businesses. Um, just not, it doesn't sound like, please stay on the line, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's such a great point. Now, are there any things that we should avoid that may take away from that client experience? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I really think, you know, being mindful about your brand and what is a reflection of you. So just because someone else is doing something or um, you've gotten feedback from somebody that you should be doing something, if that doesn't feel in line with your company and your, your mission and your vision, um, don't do it. So I think avoiding things that are, you know, very cliche or things that may, um, you know, kind of take away from what you want your experience to be like. So, you know, overall, like the best thing you can do is, you know, create something custom that's very unique. And that can be a huge selling proposition when you go out and um, share your services with the world about how you do things differently, how you um, onboard clients and get them really prepared to work with you. Um, one of my clients and I right now, she is a web designer and we're actually working on creating a wait, waiting room for all of her web design clients. And um, it's actually going to be a win-win for her client experience because her clients are going to be um, brought through this roadmap step-by-step -step, um, so that they can gather all of the things in a timely manner um, and without it being stressful. Because yeah. when you work with a web designer, you have to hand over a lot of things. And so um, we're making it less stressful on the client and uh, very streamlined, but also on her end, um, we're giving her a waiting room. So she kind of has this big group of people that are constantly waiting um, for her, which is amazing. So she can wrap up other projects and then she can take that next person who is kind of has give, handed over all of the deliverables that she needs to get started. So there's something like that where you kind of um, look at a process and be like, what's going to be better for, for both parties? Yeah, definitely. And I love how you touched upon staying true to you. How does it feel to you? Just because someone else is doing something one way, your uniqueness is what's going to draw people to you. It's your unique value, you doing things the way you do them, creating your experience the way you want it to look, what feels good for you. That's what's going to draw people in. I think so many times we're, we're trying to conform to these these things that just don't feel good to us. It's like, oh, you know, because everybody's saying I need to do reels, I need to do reels, you know, and then you show up on reels and it just looks bad and it's not authentic. It just, people can tell, people can tell when it's not aligned and when it doesn't feel good. So I really do appreciate you saying, you know, hey, how does it feel to you? Brianna? Yeah, this definitely. Yeah, yeah. This was such a great conversation and just fabulous value that you shared. You know, we don't have to make it this complex beast of, you know, client experience. That sounds kind of like scary when you hear it at first, but you know, it's really about identifying those, those little things that you can do. Dive in, get creative, find out how you can really improve that experience 
And it's going to have your, you know, clients there with you for life. You know, it'll help your retention rate and your referral rates. How often do people forget, you know, hey, word of mouth is still one of the most effective pieces of marketing out there. Exactly. And that's where, you know, having that client experience um, that's really unique comes into play because people like, how, how do you not talk about that? Like, look, I got this really cool candle for my coach, Um, whatever it is, you, you're obviously going to share it. Um, And that makes, you know, that experience, you know, press worthy. And um, so that's something that is really important as well as just making sure that that process is, you know, sustainable for you in the long run. Yeah. Love it. Brianna, where can we learn more about you? Yeah, well, I'm most active on Instagram, um, so you can follow along, um, send me a DM if you're new, um, or if you have any questions about the client experience. Um, my handle is at Brianna's Business Boutique, and that's the best place to get in touch with me. Um, right now, I'm actually in the process of updating my website, so um, that'll be the next go-to place, but it is kind of under construction right now. Uh, but in the future, you can also find me there and learn more about um, you know, my brand and my services um, at Brianna's business boutique.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to connect with our listeners today. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 